ओम सहना वतु सहना भुनक्तु सह वीर करवा वह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु माँ विदिषा वह ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु If you have to still mute, so I can do it from here. So, so we are on chapter eight of Bhagavad Gita, imperishable Brahman, Akshara Brahman, and we were on verse nine. And we, I was a. It it is a very very important one, nine and ten, and um. There are many favorites in in Bhagavad Gita. For one, these are my favorites too. One of them, I have many, and um, we were going through different words and what it means. So just to recap, um, it's um, even in meditation. We, we we can if somebody say, "How do I start?" You can start with remembering these. That's how important they are. So it's Kavim Puranam Anushasitaram Anoraniya Samanusmaridya Sarvasya Dhata Ramachintya Rupam Aditya Varanam Tamsa Parastat. So we had gone up to Achintya Rupam, but we'll just quickly recap what they are and then I will, we'll go in detail what is Aditya Varanam Tamsa Parastat and then we'll read Swamiji's commentary today. So Kavi, so Kavi word in Hindi language, you know, is poet, but here it has a very deep meaning. It means omniscient, knows everything. And we went in detail what it means. And that's one word that every religion uses, God is omniscient. And then the next word was Puranam. So just the word meaning, oh, ancient, but this has a lot bigger meaning than that. Uh, you know, Purana hote hue bhi naya jo hota hai. Usko bolte hai, Puranam. So जो हमेशा नया दिखता है समथिंग लाइक दैट और इज इटरनल जस्ट द फाइनल मीनिंग वी ड्रॉ आउट ऑफ दिस जस्ट लाइक यू नो सूर्योदय व्हेन वी सी एवरी डे इट लुक्स न्यू इवन दो इज द मोस्ट एंशियन फ्रॉम द अर्थ पर्सपेक्टिव सो लाइक दैट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड देन अनुशासितारम दैट दिस इज अनुशासन यू नो लाइक अ कंट्रोलर द रूलर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बट नॉट इन अ वेरी a uh, negative way that you know punishing everybody not like that but the uh, you know like uh, it controls everything the laws of nature everything has come from him law of karma law of nature that's how it's the ruler and then um anoraniyam means smaller than the smallest or minuter than the minutest or subtler than the subtlest all of these things come under this so it's a, we cannot grasp you know this bhagwan like this with, with our some instrument or something because it's smaller than even atom because all, everything is come from it so and then other way of looking at it it is subtlest thing that we know is space and space has also come from there so it's subtler than the space also anusmaret was you know one who remembers thus you know koi bhi anybody who meditates like this you know uska kya hoga that this verse is connected with actually 10 but here right now we are just understanding what each word means in its depth through our, you know all the different mahatmas their uh, analysis of it because very deep because bhagavad gita is a subtle subject and we have to go deep into it and then sarvasya dhataram it's a support of everything so this and and you know ruler all these are connected and support and in a sense that without this foundation you have nothing you know that's what it means and uh, swami ji is also going to give uh, some some uh, examples examples are the best way to understand this concept um, and uh, the best example is a gold gold and gold ornaments 
without gold you cannot have gold ornament so it's a sub that's why it is a support of it or you know mud and mud pots or ocean and waves the waves cannot be waves until it's supported by the ocean so like that we have to think and then uh, um after thinking about all these things krishna bhagwan said achintya rupam <laughs> you cannot think about it this really put some water on everything but we have to understand what it means and i was i was thinking that some of you know some of the examples i have heard over the years are very good one and you will probably all of you will connect with it it's like uh, you know the instruments that we have they are not the right instrument to grasp it that's what it means so it's something like you cannot change a tire with just a mere screwdriver you know if if you you have a punctured tire and you all you have is a screwdriver you cannot go out and change your tire you need some proper equipment you know and the other example is hey if you if i want to stitch some um cloth to talwar leke main nahi stitch kar sakti i need a needle i need a, a very barik thing even though it's made of the same material so that this drives the point that uh buddhi does have a role without without a sukshma and pure buddhi we cannot reach there but then you have to transcend it also that's what it means so these instruments have we transcended and uh, you know when we go to aditya varanam there is some explanation over there also and we will see uh, by you know um, the swamis and all that and we'll go into it and that will get become more clear because all these are kind of related to each other so that's how we have to look at it because if if we understand one properly then we'll understand the other one also because they all kind of merge into each other the meanings so now we will go more in detail about uh, aditya varanam this is also very very important aditya varanam and tamsa parastha they are connected so aditya varanam is um you know when one of the biggest problem that all of us have when we are uh, the moment we say achintya rupam hey if i don't have buddhi how will i recognize bhagwan or how will i recognize a, you know that so it is like the sun aditya sun varanam like nature of the sun that to see the sun we don't need any other light that is one of the most important point we have to draw from it that uh, you know um, to see sun we we hum log diya leke sun ko nahi dekhte because i don't need any other light sun itself is self effulgent in fact everything that we see in the world is a borrowed light from the sun that's how we see it even if somebody says oh i turn the light on the energy has come from sun only to turn my light on so same way uh that's what basically it means that um when we say aditya varna but there's lot lot more to it and we will go into that so taking the same example the self uh does not mean an any other knowledge to recognize it you you would recognize it and how it happens that you know nikhilanand ji explained it very well so we'll go more into it and the other um connotation over here is aditya varanam because knowledge is always um उसका जो एग्जाम्पल देते हैं ना नॉलेज का वो वो लाइट से देते हैं वी कॉल इट लाइट ऑफ नॉलेज यू नो एंड दीज डेज दिस इज लॉट इन द न्यूज अबाउट दैट द इंडिया दे वॉन्ट टू चेंज नॉट चेंज दे वॉन्ट टू गो टू द ओरिजिनल नेम भारत ऑफिशियली ऑल्सो एंड भारत मीन्स अ वन हु रेवल्स इन इन लाइट ऑफ नॉलेज सो लाइट ऑफ नॉलेज ऑलवेज कनेक्टेड विद विद फिजिकल लाइट ऑल्सो so that means uh, when we say that that nature of light means nature of knowledge and that is nature of consciousness it's pure knowledge so and and then we discuss that we don't need any other light so that's why we don't need all our equipments and our main equipments are senses mind and intellect these are the three things so uh, because we don't need them in fact sometimes they can become a hindrance in in knowing god because you know um i still remember there was one um you know saint she was a woman and she i i asked her in the early stages when i was trying to understand about this thing that hey what does a buddhi do what is the role of a buddhi so she said buddhi always divides 
you know we don't think of it that way the moment the, something comes in front of a buddhi buddhi will say comparing oh ye ye theek nahi hai wo theek hai wo and and it's dividing 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 and you are trying to go towards oneness it's a, exactly opposite the word buddhi does so i said wow i never thought about it that way so that's why they say that buddhi is not the right equipment because it will take you in some other angle only and some of the upanishads have these kind of uh, verses that you know too much knowledge it takes you in a darkness <laughs> you know it's very strange but it makes you think why so that's why it is that you have to uh, transcend it and then when you transcend it you come to know god and then nikhilanand ji gave this a uh, very beautiful example is how do i understand this he gave an example of a dream he saying suppose you you're lying on your bed very comfortably and then you go into the dream world and then you dream that you are in the garden somewhere right taking a stroll in the garden suppose in the dream somebody comes and says hello actually you are not in the garden you are actually sleeping on the bed at that time in that dream you will say no what are you talking about i can smell the flowers i'm picking the flowers I, i'm not sleeping on the bed you will not believe that person but then how will, will this happen when you wake up somebody shakes you up and you wake up and then you will know are ba yeah i am on the bed but has the person changed no he is the same person he just got awakened now apply the same thing to to this that hey how will i understand god or who i am hey i'm i'm kind of asleep because i'm in this world which is like swapna like and now somebody saying hey that that's not your real nature so what are you talking about you know so you have to awaken first so the example you can stretch it a little bit the guru comes and shakes you up <laughs> hey hello <laughs> you are not this <laughs> you know and and then you for some god's grace if you wake up then you the same i becomes god okay now i re- realize you know that hey um this is what it is so the term they use in in vedanta is that ego ego is the one that get dissolved and this whole process is for that and then then god as though god arises over there and because e- ego is dissolved and i think Uh, anil ji was saying about it that you know or god plus maya is like the world if you take maya away you become god or there are so many other ways you you can look at it and uh, so then you realize i am brahman so basically what we are do, trying to do right now is that we are told by all these saints and sages who have experienced that that hey you are brahman and we are kind of striving to realize that because we have shraddha and we are believing them you know if you just go by the worldly things you won't even believe it but we are listening to these people and you know or krishna bhagwan and all that so then what what is what happened to a realized master he just realizes that it was a mistake in thinking that i am a limited being that's what happens to you know these saints and sages and i'm sure you have heard of this sentence i like it a lot where it says we always say that we think that we are human beings having a spiritual experience that's what we say no oh i i felt this or i'm having a spiritual experience but the saints and sages say the exactly opposite you are a spiritual being having a human experience <laughs> so it's that's the key thing over here that they are talking about and um Let's see some other points were there by Nikhilanand ji. Um, yes, so now going to that tamasa parastha thing, there is a limited in this. Uh, there is a limitation. Sorry, in this particular example of Aditya Varanam, that's why Krishna Bhagwan had to come with tamasa parastha, and it is a little bit subtle thing. So I'll try my best to explain it. He's saying that. Um, the sun itself does not know any darkness bolte hain ki jahan light hai wahan darkness nahi ho sakti so the sun the sun does not recognize darkness because usme kabhi hui nahi darkness so it doesn't know what darkness is but we 
through the light of consciousness understand both we understand what is light and what is darkness so in a technical term both are illumined by this consciousness okay so consciousness is beyond that light and dark but i understand light and dark both but in the pure sunlight you it's sun it doesn't understand darkness so that's why it's a tamasa parastat you can look at it many tamasa means darkness parastat means beyond so so uh, this you know brahman is beyond darkness so there are two ways of looking at it one is he is beyond ignorance usme ignorance hai nahi you know so it is pure knowledge and the other way to look at it is that that it i understand in the light of consciousness in through my intelligence because which is illumined by that that consciousness i understand light and dark both knowledge and ignorance both i know what i know and i also don't know what i don't know <laughs> see what i'm saying i hope that this is this is something you have to contemplate about i i thought it was quite amazing this you know the way they explained and then um one more thing he he brought out nikhilanand ji which was very interesting he said that um to understand you know everything we need mind and intellect together that's why you know we have this something called feelings and bhavna we call it right when it comes to pure ai it doesn't have that and that's the biggest difference and and in in this um world that's why ai can never rule over humans because humans have this some ability that the ai does not have even though there is there are all these horrible sci-fi movies that one day they're going to take over and all that i don't think so humans are smarter they will come ways to uh, to combat that you know so um he was just saying that you have to feel what you understand and you have to understand what you feel and if both are not together then the whole thing becomes a hallucination so is uh, hey, how is that so is saying that if you are just feeling something but you are not understanding it then it's not complete then you are hallucinating and and the other thing is when you understand something but you don't feel it then it is again not complete and that's why swami ji always says you need head and heart both to fly in meditation otherwise if you have just go towards one it's, it's going to be a lopsided thing it's like a bird flying with one wing it's going to go in circles so yeah, that's the best example here so you need both so that's what this these are very deep things aditya varna mein tamasa parasta but they are very very subtle points and very interesting points so what he was saying is that when we constantly remember brahman with all these pointers and remember each one is just a pointer toward that direction it's not like a complete definition but they are also true in a partial way so that's why you have to uh, churn on this and then the way he put it that you know when you transcend your ego then you will know yourself by yourself you know and what does that mean yourself by yourself that you don't need any other object or instrument and the other very very good example is when the uh, river merges into the ocean is it that once the river merges into the ocean the water mixes like that you don't even know what is ocean what is river nobody can tell ganga ho koi saraswati any any nadi if it goes into the ocean it's called the ocean so same way that when you transcend this ego then you become yourself that brahman and that's why you recognize yourself and i think there was a poetry that somebody had put on our chain where how the river is so fearful before it enters the ocean it trembling with fear doesn't know what it is and then it and it becomes the ocean it becomes so happy you know so same way this is um how we have to look at it so i think i had mentioned that this verse 9 and 10 are so important that that our guru dev when we read our commentary we will see that he said that if every thing uh, get destroyed uh, of vedanta if these two verses verses are there it is a essence itna important the end the verses ko you know and the 10th verse is actually gives um, 
how to um, reach that state. Nine words is giving the indicators and 10 words gives us the technique actually. Yeah, how to remember God or it's, it's called even the Samadhi or Nirvikal Samadhi, which is the highest level of Samadhi. How to reach that, there are some pointers. So that's what these words are. And before we read uh, Swamiji's commentary, anybody has any question or a comment? I want to add anything with these meanings? Okay. Any volunteer to read? Yes, Samiji. Uh, going back to this Tamasaha Parastha. Hmm. Yes, by any chance. I may be wrong. Uh, but just the intuitive thought that Parastha is like defeating. And hmm. so all this Aditya Varnam is Tamasaha Parastha. It defeats the darkness that one has. Does it, does it by any chance mean in Sanskrit? Yeah, I'm Parastha. sure it, that, that what, you know, what you're saying is, is, is true. So, you know, this is what happens. Sometimes, you know, the ex one word cannot bring out the whole concept. <laughs> and, you know, it gives a little indication and, and you have to he hear three, four words, you know, it's just like Om. Om is such a small word and there's a whole Upanishad on it and you can go on and on. And that also doesn't cover all the sound part of it and this and that. So like that, you are right. So that's why we, he was saying that it's beyond darkness. That's what, you know, here uh, Swamiji has put beyond darkness. But disco jisme ignorance hai nahi. Isi liye bola ignorance ko defeat kar diya. <laughs> you know, but then... Uh, because he compared it to sun first, Aditya Varanam, and sun may, I, I was saying, look, he does not understand what darkness is, but we, in our intelligence, understand what darkness means. That, hey, we know that this is light, this is darkness, but when there is a complete light, that that entity does not understand what darkness. That's why they have to put both. So sometimes the, the two words flow into each other, you understand each one and then take it together, then it, the meaning comes out. That's how I look at it. I was just taking the word, Hindi word, parast. Yeah, so parast kar dena. So, so, so defeating. Yes, true. So, so oh, oh, usko wo ye word use kiya, lekin usko bade trick ke saath use kiya. And, um, you know, sometimes, it has happened in our class and even in Chinmaya Mission children's class has happened. Sometimes they, you know, koi example diya visine. And then if you start over analyzing the example, again, the problem comes. So then the whole, what I learned over the years is you take the gist and drop the example. If you don't do that, again, you'll be, that's why they say that buddhi ka ek hi role hota hai, but thoda sa. Jada nahi, nahi to gadbar ho jata hai isme, ye wale subject mein. You know? Yeah. Yes, that's true. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, who is my volunteer today? Otherwise, I'll, I have to call up among my usual readers. I'm giving a chance to anybody who wants to read. Mm -hmm. Okay, Anilji, you're on. It's very long, so if you do get tired, you know, then maybe Meena ji and Sushil ji or somebody can take over. Knowledge. Whosoever meditates upon the omniscient, the ancient, the ruler of the whole world, minuter than the, than the atom, the supporter of all, of form inconceivable, effulgent like the sun, and beyond the darkness of ignorance. By holding the mind constantly in the contemplation of the self, the devotee was promised that the devotee can develop in himself such a powerful and divine trait that at the time of its departure, it can easily come to entertain easily the thoughts of the divine. By a very subtle implication, it was also suggested in two pre previous stanzas that even while continuing to live in the present embodiment, the seeker can reach a point where the death for egocentric life happens. 
such a total annihilation of ignorance created misconceptions and the consequent vanities can be successfully accomplished by the seekers only when their minds get totally withdrawn from their attachments to the false matter envelopments through the process of continued contemplation upon the self. So, um, over here, you know, just wanted to bring out one very important point that, uh, uh, you know, Swamiji, Chinmayananji, he gives a lot of impact, importance to Jivan Mukti. <laughs> because he's saying, at the time, you don't have to wait till the time of death. Because sometimes we take you know, prayana kale or anta kale, we take it as death. No, no, he's talking about death of ego. And he's, next verse, he's going to very, very strongly say that. In fact, he will go as far as saying is, hey, when, when we are dying, you know, because next verse is going to say, you know, it's like in, in meditation, how you're supposed to bring the pranas in the middle and all this. When you're dying, you, you won't be able to do all those things. So they cannot be just talking about that. So he's just saying that we have to develop all these things while we are alive and what the, and you can actually reach this state while you are alive and you can have a total annihilation of ignorance related created conceptions and here you can come up with this word parastha jo apne bola na samir ji ki you you can defeat the ignorance while you are still in the body that's what he's trying to say with all the the tips that krishna bhagwan has given we can accomplish that that's what he's trying to say and then he says that total with, withdrawing from the attachments of false matter envelopments I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the senses, you know. Go beyond that. We can do it. Hmm. Yeah, that, ah, sorry. Sorry. Um, that, and that, you know. like, that's where the intellect comes in. The, it discriminates and tells it. Attachments, how do we detach ourselves? Yes. That's how. Yeah. So, you know, like, uh, even though we always listen to... Right. Go ahead. What were you saying? It's very important. Attachment yes. has a... Hmm. Because that's where the sadhak comes in. That's how I become a sadhak of this. Because you can attack, you know, where discriminate is the more, to me, that was very important. The intellect has a very important role in that way. Right. So what, what we understand from going this far in, in you know, now chapter 8, in Usko's intellect is very good equipment, but it usko pure banana padega, usko sukshma banana padega, you know. So we have, we have to make it subtle and pure. Without that, it will be useless for us. So, um, and then what you said is so true because the moment we keep hearing that, hey, um, transcend the intellect, transcend the intellect, so then why do I even need it? No, you need it to get to that stage, you know? And the best example that I've heard that, you know, if, we, if I want to take a plane, I have to go to the airport for the flight. The plane cannot come to my house. You know, so the intellect has to be taken to a point from where you can take off. And the other very good example is the guy, people who do high jump, they take the help of a pole to jump over. Without that pole, they cannot reach that height. So you are absolutely right. So we have, when, when they say transcend, and transcending can only happen with pure, pure and subtle mind. Otherwise, you will not, you will be stuck into it. Like this worldwide web. You see, I'm going to go You know, so you got to make, so, so true, so true, what you said. Yeah. In the uh, preceding stanza, it was also vaguely hinted that the contemplation of the self must be as supreme, resplendent Purusha. If I am advised by somebody to meditate upon a meditate upon or think of the possibility of oxygenating it will be impossible for me however wise a man i might be unless i know what that is merely on a name no consistent contemplation is possible oxygenating is merely a word constituted of letters it means nothing it is only a rounded sound represented by a few letters of the alphabets. Similarly, if I am advised by a Shastra to meditate upon the supreme resplendent self, it can only be as futile as to be asked to think over the possibilities of oxygenated 
So what, why he's bringing that up very, very important. There were two points. One is in going back to even chapter six, after telling everything about meditation, Krishna can say, go meditate upon the self. And then if you don't know what self is, how can I meditate? Or, you know, love God. Hey, I don't know who God is. How can I love him? That's where the whole thing is coming. And then he's bringing this point in, in this verse when he says, you know, divyam, um, corrected. paramam purusham divyam. You know, you will reach that para, paramam purusham. Who, who is that paramam purusham? It's very easy to say paramam purusham divyam, but then these are the definition of paramam purusham divyam. That's what he's pointing at. That this, he is Kavim, Purana, Manusha, Sitaram, all these things. And then these things are going to keep opening up now till, till we go to chapter 15. You know, it's going to be so much more detail about who God is. You know, so that's what he's talking about. So once I know the meaning, then I can, cont then I know, then I have the reverence, then I have the um, tools to meditate, then I have everything. I have to know who God is first. In a practical textbook of instruction as to how Vedanta can be lived, Lord, the singer of Gita, has to provide Arjun with sufficient material indicating the line of contemplation to be taken by the meditators. The two stanzas now under review give an exhaustive design for the ordinary to make themselves successfully and profitably disciplined. So he put the Vedanta in two stanzas. That's what he's trying to say. So here now he's uh, enough sufficient material for contemplation. So when you know, like anybody, when we come to a point, hey, people ask each other, hey, do you meditate? Um, uh, maybe. How do I do that? Here it is. <laughs> you know, go to these two verses. Understand that you have a sufficient material to 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 meditate upon. Who here it is? Yes. The stanza, as it stands, uses the terminologies which are similar in the literature of the Upanishads, and Arjun, as a student of the Vedas, knows their imports exhaustively. Therefore, there was no need for Krishna to give lengthy discourses upon them. However, the study for these stanzas would be profitable for us only when we try to inquire and ascertain the volumes of suggestions that lie concealed in each terms used here. Okay, so there are some words that... The same thing. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's just saying that, you know, like, I, I always say, think about it this way. Uh, Krishna Bhagavan ne ye jo sara gyan, pehli baat hai ki pura vedo ka nichod is in Upanishad, Upanishad ka nichod is in Gita, right? Or kab diya jab war hone wala tha. Unke paas na time nahi tha. <laughs> so he had to give. Jaise ham log ne acronyms bana diye na. Ki kuch bhi hota hai to, you know, they give short, uh, short words. And then, you know, and, and you know, this is like, uh, this actually happened. I was in Delhi and I said, uh, you know, um, where is this place, this shop? He said, next to MACD. So I said, MACD kya hota hai? So they, he said, McDonald's. India mein McDonald's ko MACD bolte. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like the MACD over here, ki bhai, you know, shortest diya usko, lekin Arjun was not a, firstly, he, he was very intelligent, and secondly, he had studied all the Shastras. He just got a little mixed up like we do. <laughs> you know, ki uska actually meaning kya hai, agar thoda side mein chala gaya, no? So, so that's what is he did there. Swami is just, just reminding that this each word is very, very deep, and that's why we are, we are going through a little more you know, thing because khali aise bol denge na kavim purana man kuch nahi samajh mein aayega hum logo. But we gotta go and sit down, read the commentaries, you know, think about it, and then it will sink into us. What is the meaning? That's what he's trying to Just say. Just one point I wanted to make, yes. Umaji, ki Arjun was very learned in scriptures. Unko sab aata tha. Lekin usko jab asli musibat padi to apply kaise karna hai? Wo wo Krishna Bhagwan sikha rahe hain unko aur unke through hum sabko ki yes. just Theoretically, Anna, ek baat hoti hai. practical application alag cheez hoti hai. Toh, ye sabko hai, I think. Yes, that wo bhi ek point. bada point hai. Aur dusra kya hota hai ki jase chapter 1 mein uh, Arjun ne khub lecture diya Krishna Bhagavan ko, right? Ki bhai, ye ho jayega, wo ho jayega. Dharma Shastra quote kiya, Arth Shastra quote kiya, ye sab. So, 
जब हम लोग का मतलब होता है ना तो हम लोग बड़े बड़े शास्त्र कोट करना शुरू कर देते हैं उसके पीछे छुप जाते हैं यू नो एंड देन जो असली चीज़ है वो नहीं करेंगे दैट्स देर आर सो मैनी सो मच साइकोलॉजी इन दिस दैट यू नो यू वी हैव टू रियली चर्न अपॉन इट दैट बड़े बड़े पंडित भी लाइक वी दे गेट साइड ट्रैक्ट तो हम हम कौन सी खेत की मूली है राइट टू कीप अस ऑन द ट्रैक कॉन्स्टेंटली and that's why it's so important and so there is so what you said is absolutely right firstly we we want to use the right thing at the right place you know and then learn to to do what it what we are supposed to do and when we you know come into some kind of dilemma which we do all the time you know how to and then you know lot of um, mahatmas you know they they take you even more practical way uh, to to kind of understand it and when i was doing my study group when i started listening to all these so i said wow we are even more lucky than than uh, arjun because arjun ne to seedha you know kind of sutra dhang se suna right okay now you go and fight hum log ke paas to itna sara material hai <laughs> if i don't understand something i can i can google it i can ask question i have mahatmas i have this us bichare ke paas kuch bhi nahi tha he has to just have faith in krishna bhagwan and just do it that way you know so we got lot more advantage firstly we are not in a war zone like he was hamare wars unke uske comparison mein kafi chote mote hain so you know we to learn it correctly we have to give it time true uh, you know to miraj's point hmm. um there is a difference between vidwan and buddhiman mm mm-hmm. you can be vidwan jaise hamare jo buzurg the wo kehte the padha likha bahut hai अकल ढेले की भी नहीं है मैंने भी सुन लिया एंड यू नो व्हाट स्वामी जी कॉल्स देम एजुकेटेड इडियट्स और समथिंग लाइक दैट यू नो ही इज वेरी ब्लंट सो ही विल ही विल से यूज दिस वर्ड्स टू वेक यू अप यू नो दैट एंड वी सॉ दैट ज्ञान एंड विज्ञान वी यू नो हुएवर रिमेंबर्स चैप्टर 7 दैट्स व्हाट इट इज विज्ञान मींस विजडम से किया हुआ ज्ञान मींस एक्सपीरियंस किया हुआ नो एक बात होती है कि हम लोग को ड्राइविंग uh, सीखनी है तो हम लोग ने ना किसी को देखते हैं किसी को कुछ करते हैं you know, पढ़ते हैं सारे रूल्स जब तक व्हील के पीछे बैठेंगे नहीं और खुद ड्राइव नहीं करेंगे तब तक हम लोग को एक्सपीरियंस नहीं आ सकता है फिर आफ्टर अबाउट टेन फिफ्टीन ईयर्स वी आर सो गुड एट इट यू नो वी कैन डू टॉक एंड वी कैन सी म्यूजिक एंड स्टिल ड्राइव बिकॉज वी हैव बिकम यू नो एक्सपर्ट इन इट बिकॉज ऑफ द एक्सपीरियंस सो दैट्स वॉट इट इज यस these qualifying terms are as many different indications of the truth though none defines it but all indicating the principle of consciousness which is the thrilling core that gives a similitude of life in reality to inert unreal matter no single term here therefore is to be understood as complete in itself geometrically a point can be defined and indicated only with reference with reference to two different sets of data so too here the inexpressible reality has been almost correctly explained with these different qualifying terms so you know it is that that example that we saw of you know blind person trying to understand what is elephant remember we we went through that ki bhai a blind person hai and there are 10 of them 10 blind people and then they touch each part and then they describe the elephant hey is that the total elephant no one person is but they are not wrong also right that uski sound aisi hoti hai you know uski pooch aisi rassi ki jaisi hai and uska pair khambe jaise hain all are everything has to be put together so that's what he, he was saying that n- nothing can define brahman like that because and another thing is nobody can show you hey this is brahman we saw we cannot see it in, in a test tube or anything like that so the only way is shravanam that you listen or read or something like that and then all different indicators and then you put it all together soak into it and you will get a better picture of it i will say a better picture with your intellect and like we saw it can give you a glimpse of it it can give you some indication but it cannot you cannot experience it until we come to that final stage of this so that's what he's trying to say over here that these terms you know i love these terms 
because we once he, they opened it up we understood what they're going to say at least to some extent you know not even not completely so it's very very carefully chosen by lord krishna all these terms you know over here in short contemplation upon the reality though an attempt at exhaustively comprehending all the secret suggestions in the above stanza is to prepare a mental condition in which if that mind lives well integrated and is turned inward it can only it can come to pause in an atmosphere of infinite experience under the heading barreling of the thoughts this subtle technique of meditation has been explained elsewhere so here it there is a book of, of swami ji called meditation and life in that he has used this term barreling of thoughts बैरलिंग ऑफ थाट्स इज लाइक यू नो गन का बैरल होता है ना उसको कौन सी दिशा में पॉइंट करेंगे फिर वहीं पर वो गोली छूटेगी सो ही जस्ट सेंग दिस इज लाइक टेकिंग ऑल योर थाट्स विच आर काइंड ऑफ स्प्रेडिंग इन द वर्ल्ड ब्रिंगिंग इट टूगेदर एंड देन काइंड ऑफ विद माइंड लिव विद वेल इंटरग्रेटेड ट्यून इन वर्ल्ड एंड देन यू हैव अ चांस ऑफ टेकिंग दैट फ्लाइट और इन्फिनट एक्सपीरियंस and we have talked about it so much that even grace of god is required at the end you can you can kisi ne bola na ki you can go and knock at the door of god but whether he opens or not that's his choice <laughs> you know? so when he thinks he is you are you are ready then only he'll open it we might think we have done so great and all that unki nazron mein bhi great hona chahiye you know that's why keep keep getting ready keep knocking at the door <laughs> one day it will open that's what he's saying omniscient kavi the self is considered as omniscient not in the cheap meaning in which it, it is generally understood by hasty readers of the law of the vedantas omniscience does not mean knowing all thoughts of all people at all times and in all places if this were the meaning omniscient would have been the greatest hell into which the <laughs> most sinful were पावर टू बिकम गॉड फॉर कपल ऑफ डेज और समथिंग एंड फर्स्ट एंड देन बिकॉज ही वॉज प्रेइंग टू गॉड हे मेरा ये कर दे वो कर दे एंड गॉड वॉज नॉट लिसनिंग टू हेम और समथिंग एंड ही कॉट रियली अपसेट and he said you know what god you you know you what kind of god you are you know you're not listening to me the god never okay okay theek hai main deta hu tujhe power fir jab usko power mila na to wo pagal hi ho gaya because he was listening to everybody's prayers in the whole world i said please please i can't handle this you know and there is one more very very nice drishtant about it which i i love it's saying that there was one fellow you know who was praying to god and he asked uh, कि ना मेरे बेटे के लिए ये कर दे राइट एंड एंड सो ही सेड गॉड ने बोला कि यू नो दैट्स नॉट पॉसिबल समथिंग एंड ही वाज गेटिंग अपसेट विद गॉड सो गॉड ने बोला अच्छा मैं तेरे को एक एक्सपीरियंस देता हूँ तो गॉड ने अपनी हैट निकाल के उसके पर सर रख दी बेसिकली क्या उसको पावर दे दिया सो नाउ वेन ही वेन ही ओपन डिज आईज विद तो फिर वो तो एकदम हैरान रह गया फिर जब वापिस आया ना अपने होश में लाइक अ ह्यूमन बना तो उसको पूछा कि भाई क्या हुआ तब तो तू नहीं मांग रहा था जब जब तक को गॉड का पावर दिया तो बोला मुझे तो सभी अपने बेटे दिखाई दे रहे थे एंड इन दैट मोड आई अंडरस्टूड दैट व्हाट आई वाज आस्किंग वाज नॉट राइट सो दैट्स दैट्स व्हाट इट इज द ओमनिशियंसी एंड देर इज अनदर जोक अबाउट यू नो स्वामी जी वन टाइम समबडी आस्क स्वामी जी So Swami Ji, I've heard that you know all these Mahatmas can you know they they are mind readers, they can. So do you know my thoughts? So Swami Ji ne bola, me pagal hu jo tere thoughts <laughs> bat ke dekhunga. <laughs> I don't want to pollute my mind <laughs> with your bad thoughts. <laughs> I don't have no such power, you know. So that's what it is that we should take it in the correct manner, you know that omnisciency where and he's going to explain in the next two words. paragraphs of what it means you know so these are the things that really kind of explain that what they are trying to say over here the conscious principle serving as the soul in an embodiment 
is that which illumines all the thought waves that rise in that particular mind functioning in that given embodiment. The infinite self being one everywhere, it is, the, it is the same principle that illumines all the different embodiments, all the thought experiences at all times. Just as the sun is said to be seeing everything, because it illuminates all the objects on the globe, so too is the divine principle of awareness, the factor without which no knowledge is ever possible anywhere. Thus the self is considered in terms of the world of conditioned knowledge which we experience today as the supreme knower who knows everything omniscient Kavi and without whom no knowledge is ever possible. So now we know that what it means. So that it's a substratum of everything and without that nothing can happen and that's why it's omniscience. And, and I think sun example is also a very good one, you know. Sun is, you know, can see everything because, you know, the whole, our earth gets the sunlight. So that's why, so you, you can take it whichever way you want, but the very important to know, understand what it omniscience means. Well, sees everything, Umaji, and I was just thinking of the reflected consciousness. So it, it that's how it, it goes through ev that, you know, true, each true. one has. So, I mean, that, that's why there is a difference between, you know, we had discussed it, there's a difference between one wave and the entire ocean or uh, one uh, ray of sun versus the entire sun. So, so true, one ray is, and, and when it comes in, reflects somewhere, that's how I see this object. So that becomes a reflected consciousness, true. So- No, I'm saying that like, he talks about in every one, you know, he, it's not just that he captures everything, but is that because of the reflect, because of the reflected consciousness going through everybody. So that's how I took it, basically, that that's how we can say the sun knows everything or the consciousness knows of everything yes. or the, the that that's fine too there's no problem in it you know but and then sometimes you know this what does this all knowing mean and if we go back to what we learned in the Kathopanishad, that there we we don't think it that way because we we feel so separate in our mind right that hey my mind is just my mind but somewhere it is connected to that mahanatma it is connected to the super intelligence also that's how some of these people can download whatever they want from this universe because they have the channel open. So, you know, and ours is kind of, nature has kind of closed it, but once in a while when, when you know, some discoveries happen through people, some great poetry and all, if you ask them how it happened, unka yogdan bohat kam hoga usme. They say, oh, many kiya, kuch kiya, discovery. There are fortunately hundreds of people are involved behind it. And then some kind of divine phenomena happens. God wants to get some work done through you. So it's, it, he opens the channels for you. So there are so many ways to looking at, looking at this omnisciency. So the way we have to understand is, one is that it is a substratum of everything and you can look at it as a reflected consciousness. And secondly, we all are connected at, from the subtle level, we are all are connected with each other. And it's all, there is a power in the togetherness, you know. And that Vishwarup Darshan jo unhone diya, uska bhi concept yehi hai. The whole universe together has a power. Yeah. Our ocean has a power, you know, but one wave does not have that much power. Yeah. The biography of the word Kavi is very interesting as it comes down to us through the avenues of time. If the self be omniscient Kavi, then the knower of the self, who thereby becomes the self, is also to be considered as omniscient Kavi. Thus, in the language of Upanishads, the Rishis came to be known by the term Kavya. <coughs> so, he was just, he just saying that how in olden days, maybe Rishi ko uh, Kavi kaha jata tha. Or, waise bhi, madlab, Kavi jo hote na, they have a, their perception is a lot deeper than ordinary person. That's how they become Kavis. Because they can see things that what we cannot, the Samaj mein dekho, you know, or ko, koi bhi cheez ko wo log bahar nikal ke le aate hain. Unki drishti dur dur tak jati hai. So even this word kavi, jo hum ordinary language mein use karte hain, uske bhi piche yehi bhao hai. 
okay the, these are the people who can see something beyond uh, ordinary people okay so from, you can look at it that way too but he's just explaining why this word you know in sanskrit they call it kavi hmm. why also kavi can write in one line so much correct yes because yes. there is so much behind that line absolutely yes mm-hmm. The rishis of the Upanishads, as teachers of Vedanta, declared the experiences of their divine moments of inspiration in a language which, of its own accord, often fell into major rhythm and systematic uh, rhyme. Later on, an author of metrical compositions come to be called as Kavi the poet. 90 out of every hundreds of present day students of Gita, when they were asked to comment upon this line, they invariably misunderstand the term and declare that the truth is a poet, Kavi. And the remaining 10 parrot like repeat that the term means omniscient, but unfortunately, they rarely know what it is, why it is so. Such have digested understanding of this stanza cannot serve us at all on our meditation seat. This paragraph was not in my book. <laughs> yeah, Neither. so he, they added it. I think that because he just, you know, there are, we have discussed it, that certain terms have become so loose in the regular language that, that it, when it comes to Vedantic meaning, people have a hard time understanding what it is. So that's why he's just reminding you. And we, we saw as we are going through Gita, such deep definitions are there for simple things. Even, you know, like Nikhilananji was saying the word God. It's so loosely used everywhere that it's definitions God. You know, but we got to go back to this, our Bhagavad Gita and see what it means. And that's where all these elaborations and all help us to understand what really God means. Ancient Purana, Purana. The self is considered as the most ancient because the eternal truth is that which was before all creation and remains the same all through the ages of existence and shall ever remain the same even after the projections of pluralism have ended to be absorbed. To indicate that this one self ever remains the same everywhere, providing a substratum even in the concept of time, it is indicated here as the ancient in Sanatam Gita 2.2. So, you know, we have gone in a very uh, deep analysis of it. One one is a very simple thing that, you know, every place we say that when the world was not there, then we were God. When the world was not there, then we were God. So, it was ancient. And then, uh, Purnarapi Nava, Puranam, is the, that's the meaning. That the world is not there, it's new. So, eternal. There are so many different ways you can look at it. And, um, you know, there are so many bhakti ke song likhe, uh, likhe hai. And then we call it Mahakal. You know, like, we or uh, jo kaal se bhi pare ho. Wo. And then, uh, I, I don't know, in, in our Gita class, we have discussed this or not. But, um, you know, in English language, we have the word uh, the, for the smallest unit of time that we use in everyday language. We call it second. Why it is called seconds or two seconds, five seconds and all? We, we know, don't think about it. Why it's called second? Because God is first. <laughs> the time came after God. <laughs> That's how it... So even English language has Vedanta in it. A lot of times we will see. That's what it is. That this is beyond time. The overruler, Anushastram, it is not in any way indicated here that the self is a sultan, tyrannically ruling over the world. Here the term overruler is only to indicate that if the principle of awareness were not presiding over the multiple faculties of perception, feeling and comprehension in us, our physical, mental and intellectual experiences could not have been harmonized into the meaningful existence of our lifetime. So we, we know what it means now. We have discussed it that, you know, this is, it is like the principle of awareness, which is behind 
ऑल अवर परसेप्शन फीलिंग एंड कॉम्प्रीहेंशन अवर मन बुद्धि हमारे यू नो जितने भी चीज़ें हैं सेंसेज यू नो ज्ञान इंद्रिया कर्म इंद्रिया एवरी उसके सभी के पीछे अवेयरनेस है दैट्स वाई इट इज एंड देन अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज द वे ही मैंशन दैट इज बीन हारमोनाइज इन टू द मीनिंगफुल एग्जिस्टेंस एंड देन गो बैक टू दैट सूत्र और दिस श्लोका फ्रॉम वर्स आई मीन चैप्टर सेवन मणि गणा यू नो दैट दिस होल यूनिवर्स इज लाइक दिस नेकलेस पर्ल नेकलेस इट इज हेल्प टू गेदर बाय दैट थ्रेड दैट थ्रेड इज दैट गॉड और कॉन्शियसनेस इन हारमोनाइज वे you know even this class you know the the we are harmonized way we are sitting together studying all that is coming from that consciousness power only to keep it all together so that's how we have to look at it this over ruler without that we cannot be and the way this yeah. keeping it all together applies to everything everything to in the universe. universe everything everything even in a chemical reaction this that ek atom ko lo lo le lo एटम हम भी हम लोग आंख से देख नहीं सकते पर उसके अंदर है कि नहीं तीन चार चीजें घूम रही है एक दूसरे के साथ वगैरह वगैरह माय गॉड इट इज जस्ट अनबिलीवेबल या ट्रू या गो अहेड मीना जी आई वुड आई वुड जस्ट थिंकिंग या इवन फॉर वन सेल्फ देयर इज देयर हैज टू बी कंटिन्यूटी फॉर द एक्सपीरियंस टू हैपन बिकॉज़ फ्रॉम द थ्री डिफरेंट स्टेजेस एवरीवन गोस थ्रू इट एब्सोल्युटली राइट द ड्रीम एंड दैट and unless there's a continuity between each one of them because they're different states one cannot enter into the other one okay. yet there has to be continuity to say it was my experience my dream i did uh, so that for there is a continuity there is that thread going all along in yes. everybody um, mm-hmm. in every day experience so we so yeah how, absolutely okay. we you know like lot of times people say oh there is so much uh, chaos in the world and so much chaos in the universe and if you just look at it upar upar se to kitna violent sab kuch lagta hai na like uh, you know kya bolte hai usko black holes and pata nahi kya usme sab sama rahe hain anything whichever way you want to look at it explosion supernova but that is just at a surface level there is a complete harmony <laughs> because that destruction is required somewhere yes right it's like i some somebody sent me some video huh? this man was had no idea about what yoga means and all he was criticizing and then he was saying oh look at shiva you know that's a lot of destruction look at their gods he destroys so it's like mere ko man kiya ke bolat are you are really murkh because to build anything you got to destroy <laughs> <laughs> like we got our floors done if they didn't take out the carpet bro, how could they put a new one <coughs> so it's like a something absolutely necessary and one cannot happen without the other so this concept of brahma vishnu mahesh one cannot be without the other because you got to create something then you got to maintain for a while and then it has to be annihilated for the next thing to come and we see this whole day we see it in our life but we still want to compartmentalize and say this is better this is good or this uh, shaivism fighting with with the uh, vaishnav people and all it sounds so idiotic you know it's like a one power they're doing three different things because that is what is necessary and that is what is happening that's what they are representing you know so that's what it is that it it is the substratum what has to be there for these things to flow whichever way you want there's so many different aspect to each point here to think about the over lordship mentioned here only indicates that the knowing principle of consciousness is the very essence but for which life defined as a continuous series of experiences in no shape is ever possible without mud the mud part cannot exist in all parts the mud is the over ruler just as gold in all gold ornaments the ocean in all waves sweetness in all candy so too is the self in the universe it is in this sense that the term over ruler is to be understood to conceive of god as a mighty policeman standing with two keys one made of gold to open the gates of the heavens and the other of iron to open the doors of the hell is barbarous concept which has nothing sacred in it 
to attract at least the intellectually awakened generations. So yeah, excellent. That's exactly what Bina did. This paragraph is not there in my book also. But, uh, and I think he had, has put this somewhere else or I did read it, but right here it's not there. But anyway, that's exactly what Meena Ji was saying. That for continuity, we need that substratum and uske hisab se wo overruler bata gaya hai. Because the moment we, sorry, the moment we hear the word ruler, so kuch tyranny type of idea comes into our head. That's why he's telling. Yeah, go ahead. What were you saying? No, no, this is just a funny comment. The key to the hell is made of iron. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Minuter than an atom, anoranyam. Anoranyam. Anoranyam is a word. Yeah. Anoranyam. Yeah. Hmm. The simplest, the smallest physical div divisible particle of any element which still maintains the specific properties of that element is called the atom. Thus, it is indicated here that the self is the subtlest of the subtle. The subtler a thing, the greater is its pervasiveness. The water is considered subtler than a block of ice, and the steam gained on evaporating the water is considered subtler than the water itself. In all these stages, pervasiveness is the measuring rod of its comparative subtleties. In the Lord of the Upanishads, it is usual to consider the self as the subtlest of the subtle, which only indicates that it pervades all and nothing pervades it. So, you know, minuter than the atom, I was going to say that, you know, I did uh, my science and all in high school later on, you know, I went in the commerce college, so I didn't do that much detail, but I learned a lot more science from Swamiji's commentary sometimes. <laughs> You know, this definition of atom is so beautiful. I have not read it in my science class over there that the simplest and smallest physical divisible particle of any element which still maintains a specific quality. That's called atom. Okay. I didn't even know that. It's so great. So anyway, here they are trying to tell you that as I was saying that छोटी से छोटी चीज जो तुम्हारे दिमाग को समझ में आती है उससे भी छोटा लेकिन छोटा मतलब ऐसा नहीं कि इतना सा परवेसिव सटल एंड द बेस्ट एग्जांपल ऑफ सटलिटी इज गिवन यू नो बाय चिन्मयानंद जी अगेन इन अनदर कमेंट्री दैट यू टेक अ ब्लॉक ऑफ आइस एंड यू कीप इट देयर इट हैज अ स्पेसिफिक शेप एंड इट्स H2O बट इन अ स्पेसिफिक शेप देन यू हीट इट सो इट बिकम्स वाटर इट बिकम्स मोर परवेसिव it can you know pervade the shape of the thing it is in a glass a bucket or whatever so then it has become more pervasive then you continue to give it heat a point will come it will become like a bashp you know um, and then it will kind of dissipate everywhere you know you can't even see it that's the subtlest out of these three you know uh, so the so kind of gross then subtle and subtlest that's how they, he explained it so when we talk about this brahman when we talk about subtle the main point over here is pervasiveness because it pervades everything whatever you can conceive from your mind uh, it pervades that and the subtlest thing that we can conceive from our mind is is the space we don't know where it ends we don't know and you know it it is like is one but it is everywhere and then the other example is that we need space to accommodate ourselves without space we cannot be same way you know consciousness accommodates everything so there are several things you can draw out of this but that's where it's called subtle and the last sentence is the most important one it pervades all and nothing pervades it you know and there is one uh, verse and i think isha vasya upanishad where it says hey, you think that you can be fast the brahman is the fastest so somebody said, how did they say that? He's saying it's sitting there before even you start. <laughs> sitting behind it. You know? <laughs> so it's, it's already reached there. you know. And even scientifically, somebody made a statement huh? that you can never catch up with life. So what does that mean? If because whatever we are seeing in the world or experiencing, there's a delay. We don't think about it that way. Life has already happened. If I'm looking at, say, this, whatever I'm looking outside, I'm looking at the ocean. And the, you know, the picture of the ocean has to come to my mind, then I understand what ocean means. <laughs> so that is already there. And, and if some halchal is happening, some action is happening, some boat is going, 
by the time I conceive it, there is a delay. So life has already happened before. That's why it's called, you cannot catch up with life. You know, these are all scientific facts that will, your mind will be going to sleep, you will think, but it's true. So anyway, I'm going to stop here. It, it, this is very interesting also. So even if we take very long to get this, it's, the journey is itself is very enjoyable, right? Any, any question, comment? Anybody wants to add anything? Yes, Samir Ji. Um, going back to Kavim, I think there is a kahavat hai. Jahan Ravi nahi pohach sakta hai, wahan Kavim pohach sakta hai. Yes. That means it, that's beyond everything he can reach. And that's what it, it says what that Kavim is. And Absolutely. That in this context that Kavim is, we know who that is. Something that beyond reach. Yeah. I think in the poetic way they say, Jaha nahi pahunche, Ravi vaha pahunche kavi. <laughs> they rhyme it like that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I absolutely. only learned that just now because we have a friend, his name is Ravi. Wo hamisha kehte, Jaha nahi pahunche kavi vaha pahunche Ravi. Now you know the meaning. Wo apna hi naam aagi karte te hai. So aaj mujhe pata chala, the real thing is, Jaha nahi pahunche Ravi vaha pahunche kavi. Wo ulta hi pata te hai. अभी उनको जाके ना ये बताना डिस्कस दिस विद यू कि यू नो क्या आपके नाम का मतलब क्या है रवि का भी एक्चुअली रवि इज आदित्य वर्णम यू नो सो रवि और कवि दोनों है यहां पे और दोनों का अलग-अलग उसमें से निचोड़ निकाल के निकाला गया है कि व्हाट इज ब्रह्मन यू नो मीरा जी मीरा जी उसकी वाइफ का नाम क्या है कविता है क्या स्टॉप भगवत गीता हियर एंड वी विल शी विल सोक इन टू ऑल दीज ग्रेट मीनिंग फॉर वन वीक एंड देन विल कंटिन्यू स्वामी जीज कॉमेंट्री एंड सोक सम मोर Enjoy it. Sarvadharman parityajya mamekam sharanam vraja aham tva sarvapapibhya moksha ishyami maasha chaha Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om